strict um, direction to make sure I know the Chumalongos and know the meanings of the landings of the of the shells before I offer them as a reading and before I offer them as a Apollo reading. Right. So, but I do use them for myself and through divination for the yes, no's and, and what they mean. I also, from time to time, use the pendulum if the pendulum is needed for yes or no or for locating things or for other specific reasons of workings too. <coughs> now, as a card reader, you know, you mentioned earlier, and I think it's important just to come back to this, that... Okay. You spend a lot of time when you first got your deck, you know, carrying it around with you, sleeping with it, playing with it, you know, it's it's important, you know, because that's how we develop the relationship that we have with the cards and imbue it with our own energies and have it around our spirits on a regular and a constant basis. Right. And... and the, the idea behind that is you're, you're giving your energy to the cards and you're assimilating, if you will, you're assimilating the cards to, to you. It's, you're getting the cards used to you and your energy and you're basically making them yours. Um, you know, so like I got the cards and for the first three days I had them, they never left my side unless I was in the shower. Um, you know, they were under my pillow or they were in my bag right next to me at my desk, or they were sitting on my desk right by my hand as I was working on the computer. And when I had a free minute, I started flipping through them and then reading the book. And then I meditated with them every day as well. That, that, that's a big one that actually worked for me. I'm just going to throw that out there because every, the way everyone connects with their cards is different. But for me, it was through my meditations. Um, through my meditations, it was really interesting because I felt more connected to my cards. I think and meditation it, is it important. Was every day I would pull, and I, I don't mean meditating with the entire deck in my hand. I mean taking a card at a time. Yes. No, I knew what you meant. <laughs> yeah. I, I took a card at a time, and I meditated on that card for, you know, 30, 40 minutes. And I was asking Spirit to, you know, give me the definition of what this means to me. And then... The more I did that, the more comfortable I got with the cards, and then I then I started thumbing through the book. I did all that before I even looked at the book. Um, then I started thumbing through the book and seeing which cards represented major arcana and which ones weren't, and what similarities to regular tarot some of the cards would have versus what they don't. And it, it was a process. I mean, I did not read with this deck professionally to anybody probably for almost three to four months. At least. I Maybe even longer. Important. It might have actually been five months before I felt comfortable enough because I would just read myself with the cards. And until I felt comfortable enough with the cards to actually start offering them to people. Right. And I think it's important, you know, that you brought up, you know, meditating on each individual card. Because, you know, it goes back to, and I don't know how many people still do this. When I first learned how to read cards, I was told. You got to sit with each one, one a day, every day. Doesn't matter how long it takes you. You've got to connect with mm-hmm. it. You've got to meditate, see what it makes you feel, see, sense. You know, awaken everything specifically on one card. Right. And I really don't ever read books. <laughs> and and, <laughs> and uh, you know, and, and this is a sixty-five card deck. So for sixty-five days alone, I was med- meditating on a card a day for sixty-five days. Right. But, it, you know, it really opens you up. You know, it, it connects that intuitive part of you with that particular card, and it seals in the meaning that card has for you in particular. Right. You know, now, yeah, I've read right. books on divination and books on tarot and books on what the meanings of this are and the meanings of that card. And I don't follow any of the books because, you know, for me, 90% of what I do is intuitive. Right. Well, you you can read a book all you want, but reading a book and having the hands-on experience of actually doing it are two different things. You know, and looking at, you know, the cards and how they move you, you know, that movement is spirit. That movement is saying, hey, don't pay attention to, you know, traditional meaning because what spirit is saying, this is what it has to do with. And we right. have to work through finding that particular, I'll call it a path, 
mm-hmm. of learning, you know, for those particular cards. Yeah. But yeah, I want to make sure and that we do take a moment and have a little break, because, you know, okay. I just forget halfway through to uh, <laughs> do a break. <laughs> so we'll take a little break for about uh, two and a half minutes. We'll be back shortly with Tata Swift. All right. And we are back with Tata Swift. Hello, hello. Yeah, so I want to give a shout out to a few people in our chat room. We've got okay. Adriana Roman, Charles Porterfield, the Professor Mr. Ade, William, I'm sorry, Wilma Burm, yeah, Burnham. I'm having a hard time pronouncing names today. Um, as well as to make mention of the upcoming event in April, the Big Apple Conjure Gala down in downtown Brooklyn, New York, April 14th and 15th. You can find out information at BigAppleConjureGala2018.com. They're going to have some phenomenal people doing presentations down there, and it's not something you want to miss. Also, you know, I knew... I know that Candelo's kind of on a little hiatus at the moment, but I know he's got his own show, Candelo's Corner, as well as it's 12 o'clock somewhere with Ancestor Healing's Robert Lucas, also on Spreaker. So let's get back to, you know, the divination itself. What do you tend to see most people on a non-spiritual reading type, you know, not a working reading? What's the most type of questions client tend to come to you for love and money they always want to know where their money is and who's cheating on them yep <laughs> Those are the, the, the the non the non-working readings are about usually love life and usually um about jobs and future you know what direction is their job going or what can they do in their job to make their job better etc cetera, etc cetera. 
or what they may be missing sometimes in reference to how come I didn't get the promotion or didn't get the job. Yeah. You know, because as diviners, you know, and I think a lot of people need to understand that when you divine, it's not simply ever a yes or no. You know, which is why I don't like yes or no questions. I like the nitty gritty. I want to know. I'm like the sleuth. You know, (laughs) what's going on? You know, who's involved? You know, where's it going? Why is it going this way? How come it's not going this way? What's standing in the way? Because as a diviner, I think the way we word a particular question to our deck and our spirits dictates what we're going to get as an answer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's definitely, you know when you're praying over the cards or however you wake your cards up and, and use them, um, you know, there's definitely a, a way you talk to your cards and a way that you ask the questions in your mind when you are drawing them. And I think people, you know, especially new diviners need to learn and understand that it is your right as a diviner, and you should be doing this on a regular basis, to rephrase every question that a client gives to you. So that you have a clear, well thought out question that you can get the most amount of information from. Yeah. When someone asks me, you know, I'll have someone, you know, depending on the person, if I'm sitting in front of them, oftentimes I'll have them shuffle the deck and concentrating on their question as they shuffle the deck. I get the deck back. I do a quick shuffle and then I ask them, you know, I'll ask them very deep, you know, to be very detailed in what exactly they're looking for. So I know what to ask the cards, even though they've put their energy and their thought into the cards. It helps me also speak with the spirit and with the cards and with being able to open the cards up before I even start drawing them. Now, you know, there is this thing and you brought it up a minute ago that I have to ask because I see it asked a lot in reference to, whether to let a client touch your cards or whether to let them cut or shuffle, you know, and you actually allow your clients to shuffle your deck. Sometimes, sometimes, (laughs) um, it really depends on the feeling I have at the moment. If spirit tells me to let them touch the card, I hand them the cards. If they don't, I don't. Um, and you know, if, if I'm doing a reading over the phone, obviously you're not going to touch the cards. So, <laughs> right. <clears throat> and I think, you right. know, people all have to understand it, it's all a personal preference. Like myself personally, I don't let anybody touch my cards. They don't shuffle. They don't cut. I handle everything because their energy is with me while I'm doing the reading. Right. And I'm going <laughs> to probably say on a scale of one to 10, it's probably only about two or three out of ten that I hand my cards over to someone else to touch. Now, do you cleanse your deck, or do you not cleanse? Um, if I've got someone that's got some real nasty junk on them, <laughs> I will I will cleanse the deck. But oftentimes, I don't cleanse. I because you want that energy to build up. You want that energy to be. You know, you want your energy to be with your cards. <laughs> if I do. If I do cleanse, it's going to be like a real quick sprinkle of something, like, you know, just a very little bit of floor water or something on, but not a lot. And I think, you know, it was brought up when I was talking to your godfather, Candela, uh, that, Mm -hmm. you know, it's important that we let those energies mingle and mix and... You know, mm-hmm. build because it's like a living person. You know, we all go through crap. We all have yes. ups and downs. We all have positive, negative energies. And I think the cards speak better when they have all that energy from everything you've done, every person that yeah. you've read for. Yeah. Still you know, I, I walked into someone's house here about a month ago. She contacted me and she was having some issues. You know, she thought there was some really bad dark energy in the house she just got the house and she's getting ready to move in but it just made her feel really uncomfortable and all this other stuff so i walked in so i I went over to her house and i walked in and yeah there was some negative energy in the house but there was more negative energy coming off of that person than there was the house 
And, you know, spirit told me to let this person touch my cards. And I did. I let this individual touch my cards.